hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back in today's video i'm going to be talking about gros champagne or what is sometimes referred to as single origin champagne and what the french call recoton manipulant essentially the champagne that is produced by the grower from the grapes that he has grown directly on his vineyard production is typically quite small and he's in charge of that whole process from start to finish so from planting the vines to tending to them, harvesting the grapes, producing the champagne, bottling it, and ultimately selling it on. In today's video, I want to talk about grower champagne in the context of them being, at worst, an alternative to the Grand Marc Champagne. So your big ticket houses such as Bollinger, Tattinger, Veuve Clicquot, Moet et Chandon, Paul Roger, um, et al. Uh, and at best, actually switching from your Grand Marc Champagne to buying largely or exclusively uh, grower champagne. Stay tuned and find out why I think you should. I'm Anissa Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid lux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still very much weighted on quality. For all the drama and strife that the pandemic has caused, it has been an absolute blessing in disguise for certain aspects of my business, and in particular, the shop and ship service, where clients traveled extensively, either on business or for pleasure, and they're able to do things for themselves now. With the stringent conditions of the, the lockdown and self-isolation and so forth, it's meant people aren't able to do a lot of things, but life has still gone on, pandemic or not. Um, special occasions have come and gone, um, special birthdays, anniversaries and so forth. And what ultimately motivated me to make this video was the fact that in the last month, I've had three separate clients come to me with requests specifically for champagne. They are self-isolating away from their nearest and dearest, and they wanted something special to mark the event until an opportune moment presented itself, maybe later in the year where they could then celebrate um, as a family or with, with friends as well. And for that particular day, they just wanted a champagne that was uh, maybe something new, something different, something unheard of, something that was possibly above the budget, but very much under the radar that they couldn't find in their home country. So that pretty much ruled out your Grand Marc Champagnes. And as I mentioned before, they, they are the major ticket uh, brands. They are actually responsible for making champagne as famous and as far reaching as it currently is. They have pumped a lot of money into the, the branding, the labeling and the marketing. And that is how they differentiate themselves from brand to brand. And they have made champagne as famous as it is. But the drawback if you look at it as such, as, as champagne is very much a subjective drink, it's either you like it or you don't like it. But with the Grand Marc Champagne brands, they offer a standard product. They work with growers, they buy in the grapes, and they produce a standard product. They can't deviate away from their script. They need to offer something that's consistent, they are known for a particular taste, so they need to be consistent in terms of the taste, the color, the effervescence of the champagne. And if they deviate away from that, they then potentially face reputational risk. Imagine a scenario where you're buying Veuve Clicquot Riche and you know what it tastes like, and then each year it's different. It would just be a, an absolute disaster. And what you find is where you have mature champagne markets, for example, the United States, you have Canada, you have the United Kingdom, you have consumers who are becoming increasingly discerning and they want something different. They tired of what they already have they want more they want something new something unheard of something that um, is an expression maybe of themselves and their personality that they can relate a lot better to than a standard product and so that's where you're seeing a huge uptick in um, champagne grow um, grower champagne and uh, there are thousands of producers out there producing fairly standard fairly average champagne but you do have a few at the top end of the market and those are the ones I'm really going to zone in on and highlight some of the best out there so if you see them whether it's on a menu or you see them at an event or you read about them then at least you know you're in good company and you can try the champagnes knowing they are they are of, of, of a certain level of quality and then throw into that equation my clients who want brands that are typically under the radar so 
grower champagne is an obvious choice for me because with grower champagne how they differentiate themselves they're not offering a standard product as such and they're very small is that they put their heart and soul into their champagne they typically are an expression of their personality their skill their flair and how good they are at producing champagne and they're able to make a product that's not standard but it differs from year to year vintage to vintage and terroir is the big catchphrase when it comes to your grower champagne and it's the it's all about the climate it's about the location and it's about the soil those three var variables if you tweak them you're able to inf in turn um, alter the grape and ultimately the taste of the champagne so terroir is the buzzwords buzzword for your grower champagne and with a situation like now where I'm asked for recommendation recommendations it's a natural choice to make it's a good choice to make because there's some very good producers producing unique and fantastic quality champagne so I'm going to give you a selection of maybe six if I do three in the mid-range and then three right at the top end of the market then you can choose depending on on your budget and your taste and occasion and what I've chosen in the first three is brands that compete um, for price with your Grand Marc Champagne in, and they're priced between 30 to 100 pounds and so that's what you typically pay for your average bottle of let's say uh, Paul Roger, Pommery, Perrier Jouet um, in the stores in a bar for example. And so I'm going to kick off with those three and I'm going to do another three at the top end uh, and they're going to be priced accordingly and also for quality. I'm going to kick off with my first three recommendations and the first one is a brand called Dont Grelet, one of the most exciting new generation of champagne makers, a young team very much focused on biodynamic farming. And with each brand I'm going to recommend one or two uh, champagnes, that way you have a starting point. And I'm going to recommend their Extra Brut Champagne a very delicate champagne that's vividly refreshing. My second recommendation is Philip Onar. Philip Onar is well known for their low dosage champagne. Uh, they're a small but highly respected um, producer. And I would like to recommend their Prestige Cuvée, which is their top champagne, and it's called Clos de Guasse, a fantastic Pinot Noir-based champagne. So it's going to be a fairly full-bodied, heavy champagne with um, a very dense, um, fruity taste to it. My third recommendation is Frederick Savart. Frederick Savart um, it produces, it's very well known for producing very elegant and unique premier crew. I'm going to recommend Frederick Savart Ouverture. And it's a three vintage Blanc de Noir. So it's a mixture of your Pinot Noir, it's going to be Pinot Min, uh, Munier as well. And it's um, an incredibly graceful and superbly balanced champagne. My top three recommendations, my first one, uh, or rather the first two, I have them on par, and the third one is ahead of the first two. So the first one is Jacques Salosse, and I'd like to recommend their 2007 vintage. It's a Blanc de Blanc, so Chardonnay base, and it's a fantastic champagne priced at a whopping 400 pounds. It is 2007, as I mentioned, uh, it's ready to drink, but it'll also still keep the second recommendation, I'm going to recommend two champagnes from the same producer. Uh, they're both 100%. So the first one is uh, Eric Rodet, and it's their 2012 vintage. And it's 100% um, 100, 100 Chardonnay, and I'm also going to recommend the 100% Pinot Noir. Two unique refined champagnes um, that are very, very good. Um, Edric, uh, Eric Rodet. And then my third recommendation, which is the top recommendation, is a brand called Collard Picard. Um, anything they produce is absolutely fantastic, an amazing grower. And I'd like to recommend specifically their 2002 vintage. It's a 100% Chardonnay champagne, and it has a very elegant, creamy finish to it. The champagne comes in a beautiful leather-bound case. It's great as a gift idea, or if you just want to be good to yourself and treat yourself to something special, Collard Picard, fantastic champagne. The other two, Eric Rodet and Jacques Salosse, two fantastic champagnes as well. Um, I've given you six champagnes for you to choose from to mull over. If you hear of any of them, do snap them up and try. They, you'll be in very good company. If you're somebody who's after quality and you're not so much governed by the need for a brand or something that's got a lot of hype or you see it and hear of it everywhere, and you want something that's just very much quality under the radar, 
than the six that I've mentioned. Um, if you have any further questions, you want to know something else, do let me know in the comments. I don't claim to be a, a wine expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have very good people who advise me. And um, I've, I've come across quite a bit uh, over the last few years. So I think I should be able to hold my own. But as always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.